Welcome to the guitar class here at Frank Church High School. We accept the whole that thing, right? We're learning how to play the ukulele and the guitar, and uh, you just sit there and look pretty. We have a great time. This is music appreciation right now. We appreciate all kinds of music from hillbillies to hip hop. Have a great day, Frank Church. Hello, Frank Church High School. Today is Monday, May 24th. This is Parker and John bringing you today's grand announcements. Today is National Brothers Day. I don't yeah, have any brother. brothers here. Love you too, brother. <laughs> I don't have any brothers. Counting today, we only have four days of school left. Tomorrow will be our last announcements of the year. Uh, Wednesday, May 26th is graduation, and Wednesday and Thursday are all half days for the rest of us. Final exams will be held those days, so make sure you know what to expect from all your teachers. If you purchased a yearbook, you can pick it up today at Brick. There are still about 15 left if you want to buy one. They're $23 and last a lifetime, or so I'm told. Anyone played Mini Uno? Mrs. Carter's class gave it a try. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Also, last week, we promised some clips from when the governor, Brad Little, was in the building. It's a little long, but he's our governor, so here you go. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here, and I'm just introducing you to our governor, Brad Little. He's going to be here to speak with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. The, everything we do is create an opportunity where you will choose to stay here. Um, you're all going to get a good education here. You're all going to have an opportunity to go somewhere else. Uh, my goal from the get-go, when I ran for this job, every state of the state I talked about it, is that uh, we do everything as well as we can in Idaho, so you will choose to stay here. And it's just the stability of a republic form of government, depending mainly upon the intelligence of the people, it shall be the duty of the legislature to provide a full, full uh, a uniform, thorough system of public schools. What that language meant in 1890 uh, is still germane to today. Um, you know, in, in 1890, there were a lot of kids that, you know, there were one room schoolhouses, there were a lot of them that weren't available. Uh, but it is, it is a fundamental responsibility of the state to provide every uh, no matter what your lot in life is, no matter what your zip code is, no matter where you live, uh, the opportunity to get a good education. And, and that's something that just pays off over and over uh, in, in the fact that, uh, you know, the better educated you are, the, there's a direct relationship to your ability to make a living, support your families, and more importantly, to, to support your community. So uh, it's just a high priority for me from the perspective I see it is uh, uh, always work hard. Uh, uh, chance favors the prepared mind. Uh, I think uh, Madam Curie stated that, which basically said that you're lucky if you work hard. Uh, the harder you work, the luckier you are. Uh, who you affiliate with, who your friends are, um, uh, who you select as a mentor. Um, who, who in your life, whether it's a family member, a friend, a teacher, uh, who, who do you see that you want to be like and you follow them? Those are all choices you can make. And then more and more in this society is, is working collaboratively together. And that's a demand that I hear from the workforce is, uh, you know, you can have a great education, but if you can't work with your, your fellow uh, uh, fellow uh, comrades in the workplace, uh, you're going to have trouble. And then, uh, again, this has been a truism forever, but uh, just the love of lifelong learning because... Medical marijuana would be legalized in Well, actually, medical marijuana is legal in Idaho today. There's three different 
uh, cannabinoid uh, uh, FDA recognized uh, products that are available and the Board of Pharmacy is looking at them all the time. I am not opposed to medical marijuana as long as we know what it is and people are uh, using the guise of medical marijuana to have the recreational marijuana. So like, so like people that have like like diseases, like chronic diseases. So like my dad has a chronic disease. Medical marijuana will help, but like they won't let, like it's not, they said it's not fully legalized in Iowa where you can have it to help them. Well, it depends upon which compound it is. There are, as I said, there's three of them that are, and I don't have a bit of problem with that. It's just most states that have done medical marijuana by maybe not a great, a great piece of legislation or initiative, and it's just been wide open. Yes? I have a question about the minimum wage. So, like, our population is going up, and so prices are going up, like houses, you can stores and stuff, but we're still at 17.5, which is pretty, pretty low for getting, like, affording houses and stuff. Do you ever think we're going to I talk about minimum wage all the time. The minimum wage is not a living wage. Minimum wage is a starting wage. The last number I saw was less than 1% of the workforce was getting minimum wage, and that's before what's happened in the last uh, six, eight months. I think it might even be smaller than that. The number of people getting minimum wage, what I want is for people to have a starting wage. <laughs> minimum wage doesn't apply at all in a robust market where there's a shortage of workers and a, uh, and a surplus of jobs. So uh, it, it, I, I know the number today is less than 1%. Um, our biggest problem in Idaho is we've got all these people moving in from everywhere else because they want to be here because there's economic. What I, what we think we've done in Idaho to create an atmosphere to where you want to stay here has the unintended consequence of getting a whole bunch of people moving here. They're moving here from areas where housing's a lot more expensive. They're selling their house. But that delta is going away. The delta between the cost of a house in Boise and the cost of a house in a lot of areas of California is has literally vaporized. Uh, there, there, there is funds in the, in the CARES Act and ARPA uh, to help people uh, with, with housing, but it, we're, we're victims of our own success. The economy is so good, there's so many kids staying here, there's so many people moving uh, that we just can't build houses as fast as, as, as we need them. It, it probably, I would say it's probably our biggest problem right now is affordable housing. And I'm going to be with uh, 20 some governors next week or week after next. And I know we've got two uh, times we're talking about about what what do you do? And it's just there's not enough lumber. Prices of lumber is just record high. Uh, uh, there's not enough uh, trades people, uh, framers, uh, uh, plumbers, electricians, and so we we've just got the, the classic supply and demand. Is this part of an economics class too? Yeah. Okay. It's a classic supply and demand problem where you got more demand than you do supply and the over that generally supply and demand as you learn in economics will will tend to meet in the middle. You know, it, it Idaho is a very, very, very independent state. And particularly when the federal government tells them to do something, they're inclined to do just the opposite. Uh, uh, the mayor did a great job here in Boise, and I supported her every step of the way. Uh, uh, other other areas, if they if they would have tried to do what Mayor McLean did here, there would have been an equal and opposite reaction. My gold standard a year ago was I have got to preserve health care capacity. We knew it was a global pandemic, or most of us did. Uh, there were some people that didn't recognize it, and and the. You know, every one of the 20 some hundred people that died is a tragedy. Yeah, we could have done more. Everybody could have done more. But you know, that's science. That's, and, and we are very blessed in this country uh, that some really innovative uh, people came up with the mRNA vaccine. Uh, that's what's going to be available to some of you in this room now uh, with the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, but if, yeah, we all could have done more. Of course, for your age, it's a little different than it was for the for the kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth graders about literacy. That's that's what I'm focused on. Uh, we're going to continue to work on literacy. Uh, 
is what we need to work on. But you're pretty blessed to be in this school district where they've got quite a few resources. With that, thank you all very much. Today's lunch will be classic hamburgers, spicy grilled cheese, and tomato soup, PB&J. And big thanks to Mr. B for organizing the Del Taco on Friday as well. Yes. Let's go to Caden to check on the weather. Yo. Thanks, Caden. Good morning, Frank Church. Today we're going to be here with a low of 47 and a high of uh, 53. No, high of 67. Partly cloudy. Be beautiful blue skies out. You all have a good day. Enjoy it. Thanks. Here's a gentle reminder. It's our last Monday and dad jokes are funny. Not really. Never been, never will. They can be, though. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day, Frank Church. A fab day.